The mounted regiment of the Household Cavalry have a uniquely busy schedule this year as they pull out all the stops to prepare for the Queen's Diamond Jubilee celebrations, the London 2012 Olympics and of course the regular demands that go into trooping the colour. Today they flung open the stable door to give an insight into the amount of preparation and training that goes into creating the world's most impressive piece of pageantry. Rosie Layden was there. It's an early start for the soldiers and horses of the Household Cavalry as they get ready for the start of the ceremonial season with an opportunity for a bit of bonding between horse and rider before the day's training begins in earnest. Our normal routine is to get down here for about quarter to six and they do a formal count which can take up to about 20 minutes um, and then we get ready for exercise and we leave camp for about seven o'clock so that, that first hour in the morning is, is crucial to get everything done and get out um, onto the roads. The soldiers take advantage of the green spaces of Hyde Park for their early morning exercise as London slowly wakes up around them. Later in the morning, the regiment's new horses are put through their paces by the most experienced riders to make sure they're ready for the demands of the parade square. I'm just looking for the horses to be nice and steady and obviously these horses are going to go to the guys in the troop who, with all the best will in the world, they're not riding instructors and, and so the horses have got to be as steady as they can be and they've got to be able to work in all three paces uh, and they've got to be able to work quietly and calmly and softly. And if we can get the riding instructors to do that, then the guys in the troop shouldn't have too much of a problem. Either. Ceremonial duties are even more challenging for the musicians' horses. Lance Corporal of Horse Paul Darcy, a drum horse rider for almost 22 years, is doing his best to get his latest mount, Achilles, used to all the noises around him. It's a process of just uh, getting actually used to the sound and the feeling of the drums on his back and uh, over a while he climatises to the actual position of being the drum horse and in front of the uh, cavalry bands because you remember he's got basses and trombones and trumpets behind him as well so there's a lot of music and also with the crowds with banners and balloons it's quite a lot to think about. He's only young, still very young and experienced but he's doing very well and he's getting better all the time. The iconic image of household cavalry, soldiers and horses represents the very best of British pageantry. And this year they'll be in the spotlight more than ever before with a prominent role in the Queen's Diamond Jubilee celebrations and the London 2012 Olympics. So that means the training schedule's gone into overdrive. Even though we're, we're double busy than we normally would be, um, but generally the lads are looking forward to it because it's totally something different. Jubilee, the Olympics, everything else, there's, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of variety. So in terms of the lads, is the, the morale you know, is high. I'm feeling pretty privileged to be able to take part in the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, the Olympics, because it's one-off, like, it won't ever happen again. And for me to be able to get involved in that, I think it's quite good. Quite proud to be able to take part. Cleaning the horse's equipment and preparing their personal kit is a task which takes each trooper up to eight hours and they're inspected rigorously before being allowed out for parade. It's also good discipline for their operational role. I had a troop of 14 men with me in Afghanistan in 2009-2010, the majority of whom had come straight from the Household Cavalry Mounted side, the ceremonial side. And the dedication, the hard work, um, the attention to detail that they had to display as ceremonial soldiers just came into play in a massive way in Afghanistan and I think because of that they saved a lot of lives. With the eyes of the world keenly focused on London for the Jubilee celebrations and the Olympics, the regiment are taking their ceremonial duties extremely seriously, while never forgetting their primary role as combat soldiers. Rosie Layden, Forces News in London. Well, earlier I was also at the barracks where I met the commanding officer of the Household Cavalry Mounted Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Dan Hughes, and one of their horses, Abigail. Colonel Hughes began by telling me how the regiment has reacted to their added responsibilities this year. We feel enormously privileged to be able to take part in these occasions. Um, we see it as a great honour. It's, um, it's, a, it's a unique event in our lifetime that's happening this year. And uh, yes, it's a, it's a huge honour to be a part of it. What kind of things can go wrong when you have horses and people working together in this kind of environment? I think it's the size of the crowd, certainly at the Royal Wedding last year, where there are only over a million people lining the street. We expect similar numbers for the Diamond Jubilee. And you can't really rehearse that in any sensible way. So I remember last year for the Royal Wedding, we had about 50 soldiers out waving flags, pretending to be the crowds on the day. <laughs> it helped, but it didn't quite replicate the million that were there. So mm. it, there's always a risk. I understand uh, you are rumoured to be taking the lead in the sovereign or commanding the sovereign escort for the Diamond Jubilee. Uh, how nerve wracking is that kind of responsibility? 
I think um, we do so much preparation. Everybody sees the glamour of a parade, but very rarely do they see the hard work that goes into it. We try and de-risk the whole thing as much as possible through rehearsals and preparation. Um, as I said, though, there's always an unpredictable element, and my thought as I head out of the barracks at the head of the regiment is that I no longer have really any control over what's about to happen. That's uh, in the lap of the gods. I suppose the difficult thing is men follow orders, but um, horses don't necessarily. No, and uh, that's... Uh, that must be difficult for someone in the military. <laughs> Well, they are military horses. They've all got regimental <laughs> numbers and they are subject to military discipline when required. I, I understand um, during the Olympics themselves, um, your people will be doing all kinds of roles, ceremonial roles, flag raising, but also you'll be there to support the emergency services if you're needed. That is an incredible breadth of responsibility for you. I think we are doing a number of things during the Olympics and um, I wouldn't be surprised if the requirement increased. But again... I think for, for a regiment that's used to doing different things, it's, it's, a, it, it's just a, another task that we, that we need to take on. Certainly my view is that the Olympics is national main effort and we need to make sure it's a success. And if we can play a part in that, then we will.